Welcome to Brombird News. Today, May the 17th, is the last day to submit your checklist for the Global Big Day. Head over to eBird.org and leave your information there. Let me tell you something that happened to me a few weeks ago. I was approaching my feeders with a bag of black sunflower seeds, um, wanted to fill up my feeders, and then I noticed a bird was still sitting on one of the feeders, and I thought, hmm, how strange. Normally they disappear as soon as you close the door, but this one was still sitting and sitting, and then I looked, and it appeared that the bird was sick. Like it, it just didn't see anything. Its eyes were shut and it wasn't doing anything. Have a look at the footage. I actually managed to film it. Well, and I panicked. I took all the feeders down. I washed them. I left them inside and I didn't put them back up for another week. A week and a half even though i did feel really bad because all the birds were flying around in my backyard looking for food but i was determined i didn't want the disease to spread well apparently i was wrong this is something that i just uh, realized and i found an article just recently what scientists tell you to do if you find a bird that has conjunctivitis like i did in my case they say wash your feeders regularly every two to three days keep them filled so the birds don't go to any other backyards taking the disease elsewhere so wash your feeders every two three days feed the birds keep it all in your backyard conjunctivitis clears up in about 10 15 days anyway Hi David, this week's question for you is from Metha. For the second year running, she's witnessed a Cooper's hawk attack and kill baby bluebirds that are trying to fly out out of her bluebird house. Is there anything that can be done? Hi, this is probably the most difficult question one can ask me. For starters, I studied birds of prey for 40 years as a university professor, and I adore them. On the other hand, I totally empathize with your frustration and sadness at losing your bluebird babies to that Cooper's hawk. It's not an easy problem to solve, there's no magic bullet. Here are some things you can try to at least lessen the frequency of attacks from the hawk. First, if you have seed feeders in your yard, you might consider shutting them down during the weeks when your bluebird babies are about to fledge. Those feeders do tend to attract hawks to the area. Second, if you're making a whistle signal to let the bluebirds know you put dried worms out, you should refrain from doing it because the hawk will learn to recognize it as a dinner bell too. Third, Try to locate your bluebird house as close to cover as possible to give your fledgings a chance to reach it when they leave the box. If that's not possible, then build a brush pile just below the box. Fourth, remove any potential perches where the hawk might sit and wait, such as dead branches in the area. Fifth, you could try install a scarecrow really close to your bluebird box. This has worked for some folks. Finally, I know it's hard, but keep in mind that Cooper's hawks are all part of the ecosystem and that they've got to eat too. Like bluebirds, they were once in danger of disappearing forever as well. An incredible project to figure out why Buick swans are disappearing is being organized by the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust in the UK. One woman, Sasha Dench, will be following Buick swans on their migratory route from Russia to England. The fascinating side of this project is that Sasha will be flying in a machine called a paramotor. She will be crossing over 11 countries. Judy Dench and David Attenborough are the two main supporters of the project project. The purpose of this trip is to find out why a certain amount of Buick swans leave Arctic Russia and fewer of them arrive at their final destination in England. This is truly a royal way to approach conservation. Check out all the videos on their website. I watched all of them and I was in awe. In recent episodes, I've covered certain stories about birds migrating through Malta, North Africa, the Middle East. There are actually about 2 billion birds that migrate to Africa from all over Europe and Asia. And a lot of the countries that these birds fly over don't have strict environment protection laws. So these birds face a lot of threats from hunters, with 500 million birds being hunted or trapped annually. Despite these tough conditions, there are certain places in that area that are called safe havens for birds. The United Arab Emirates is a country that is 
is fully dedicated to protecting migratory birds. Over 500,000 acres have been designated as a safe haven for 296 species of birds, 12 of which are already on the endangered list. Well, this is a very good start, but how do we get the message to the rest of the birds to fly through just that particular safe area? You know how certain birds resemble each other and some of them actually look like a close family or cousins? Well, meet the Plains Wanderer. It's a very unique bird that has no known relatives anywhere in the world. It lives in grasslands in certain parts of Australia. Like so many other species on that incredible continent, it was just left on its own to develop for millennia. And like so many species over there, it's actually now suffering from habitat loss. The Australian government has taken steps to protect its habitat and is trying to create new spots for the plains wanderer to live on. But the Office of the Environment and Heritage was afraid that that was not enough to protect the plains wanderer. So now the government is working closely with farmers because it's their land that is the primary habitat for the plains wanderer. I hope that things will work out for them. As migratory birds move up north, so do birding and nature festivals. The Huron Fringe Birding Festival is probably one of the last festivals you can attend to see migratory birds and experience the freshness of Canadian spring. This is an eight-day festival spread out over two weekends in May and June. All the activities will take place along the Bruce Peninsula, that's the coastline of Lake Huron. It's been fun talking to the organizers and volunteers of the festival festival, Arlene Richards in particular. Here are some of the images we received from them. We got some lovely pictures this week. Check out the top five that received the most votes. And the winner is David Kilgore with his picture of the American White Ibis. Dave, we're sending you Brome's largest feeder, the Squirrel Buster Plus. Not sure if it will be big enough to accommodate ibises, but if it does, please do send us some pictures. Congratulations, Dave. And before I say goodbye to you, just a quick reminder that today is the last day to log all your data on eBird. Well, goodbye, have a wonderful week everyone.